Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmidlkoffer and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute. And today's question is, what is persistent postural perceptual dizziness? Or what is PPPD? PPPD is a syndrome, it's a vestibular syndrome that is characterized by multiple aspects or multiple symptoms. And dizziness is the main symptom, of course, um, along with balance problems and, and other things. But that dizziness is going to get worse with things like sitting upright or in certain postures, walking, um, possibly active motion, active movement, or passive motion, so somebody taking their head, moving it. And then lastly is complex visual stimuli, or like things that are moving uh, in our visual field that makes us feel dizzy. And this syndrome or yeah, this syndrome, this disorder is most likely going to occur after a previous vestibular issue, like an acute viral infection or a, um, a bout or multiple bouts of benign postural positional vertigo, sorry, <laughs> benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, BPPV. Uh, too many acronyms in this video here. So BPPV is an acute vestibular issue where you get crystals in one part of your inner ear that go to another part in those canals and cause excessive vertigo. And if these acute vestibular syndromes last longer than they should, um, the brain starts to change around that and it starts to distrust the vestibular system in the inner ear because the brain does not want to make you feel dizzy. And so if the brain is like, oh, you know, John is dizzy and we need to make him not feel dizzy, we need to distrust, we need to downregulate what's coming in from that inner ear and we need to upregulate what's coming in from our eyes or what's coming in from our neck and our feet because that is what's telling, that's, that is a good true signal and that's what's telling us what's going on. And so the brain starts to change as these acute issues are going on. And if there are multiple over years, or if there are, is one significant one that's never properly treated, then what results is this PPPD, where it's this central brain problem that you know, you're not going to find anything on a MRI, you're not going to find anything on a CT scan or a blood test, <clears throat> but you will find these functional changes that are occurring in the brain that are causing this upregulation of the uh, visual system, upregulation of the proprioceptive system and lack of the vestibular system. And so what we need to do is we need to change that and try to downregulate those. And so I'm going to show you a good paper that's very recent. Um, and so it is from the Frontiers in Neurology. It is from April 16th, 2021, so relatively new. It's called Subtypes of Persistent Postural Perceptual Dizziness. Um, we are going to allow, sorry about that. Okay, so let's go through here. So background, PPPD is a persistent chronic vestibular syndrome exacerbated by upright posture and walking, active or passive motion, and exposure to that moving or complex visual stimuli. But then PPD has four precursors. So either a phobic postural vertigo, basically meaning that people are afraid of certain postures because those cause vertigo. Let's say BPV, um, laying back, always cause vertigo, so therefore they're fearful of that posture. Um, space motion discomfort, so feeling just discomfort with a lot of space and moving around. Visual vertigo, which is that complex movement, so things moving around in front of you, crowded, crowded rooms or watching traffic kind of go by. Uh, and then chronic subjective dizziness. So having dizziness for a long time can kind of breed that plastic process in the brain, causing that chronic subjective dizziness to be worse or not go away well. Um, so what they did is they tested whether PPD is a single disorder or they're trying to subtype PPD. And so they did the PPPD questionnaire, the NPQ, which is 12 questions. And I will show you what those questions are here in a sec. 
Um, but they showed that those 12 questions were best at classifying it. And really, s several vestibular tests that are generally used as a cluster are not able to do that. So that's why these questions or questions that a doctor would ask a patient are really important in, in the subtyping this. So with the exacerbation by visual motion, the visual factor accounted for 47% of the total variance. So most people had this visual component, that complex visual stimuli affected them the most. Exacerbation by walking or active motion, the active motion factor, and by passive motion standing um, were 12% and 7.6% of that variance, okay? So much less. Um, cluster analysis, right, the three clusters, the visual dominant type, type had 49, so most people were in the visual dominant, while the active motion subtype were 20, okay, a little bit less, uh, or about half of that, but then people that had the mixed subtype, so had both visual dominancy and active motion, were about 39. So again, most people have that visual dominant problem, but some people uh, deal with the visual dominance and the active motion that just, they don't trust their body in space, which deals more with that proprioception system along with the along with the vestibular system. And so the active motion dominant subtype, uh, those people were significantly older than the visual dominant subtype, which is interesting. Uh, those people may be people that they're not getting as much information from their muscles and joints. So maybe they're not as strong. Maybe the elderly, they're losing muscle mass, and so they're not able to trust their body as well. Um, Conclusions, again, the most common main exacerbating factor for PPD was this visual factor. Um, it was categorized into three subtypes, and the conventional vestibular test failed to point out those characteristics of each subtype, which the vestibular test may be good to do to help treat it, but it's not good at subtyping what is the issue, okay, or what is the, the main, the main um, syndrome. And so... So I talked about a couple different vestibular disorders, but here are a couple things. Right, acute attack of the peripheral vestibular disorder, BPPV, Meniere's disease, vestibular neuritis, vestibular migraine, all these things that can then lead to this chronic postural perceptual vestibular disorder. Non-vestibular disorders that can lead to PPD are anxiety disorders, uh, post-traumatic brain injury, which traumatic brain injury is then become a central uh, disorder, uh, orthostatic dysfunction possibly. And so here are these questions of the MPQ. And so these are things that you should look at. Quick movements such as standing up or turning the head, more of those active movements, or postural. Looking at large store displays. Again, that's the visual component. Walking in at your natural pace. Uh, watching TV or movies with intense movement that can cause dizziness. So again, a lot of screen play and screen changes uh, on movies. Riding a car, or bus, or train. That's a passive motion. Sitting upright in a seat without a back or arm support, postural. Standing without touching fixed objects, that's space motion. Watching a scroll or a screen uh, on a PC or a computer, again, that visual motion. So scrolling on your phone. Performing activities such as housework or light exercise, postural. Reading small letters in a book or a newspaper, more visual. Striding at a rapid pace, again, motion. Riding up an elevator or escalator would be more of that passive motion. And so looking at bearable to unbearable um, or no symptoms to unbearable, we can rate these and we can figure out what is the predominant subtype of somebody with PPPD and then therefore maybe properly treat it by <clears throat> down-regulating their visual system. So, um, and of course these, uh, so here are the questions that relate more to the visual factor, these five, and then ones that relate more to the active motion versus the last three or more of the passive motion standing factor. Okay, and so there are just the cluster analyses. Okay, so then let's chat about, let's chat about this here. So if somebody has too much visual dominance where they trust their visual system and they kind of down-regulated their vestibular and proprioceptive system, well then we need to do things for their proprioceptive system. We need to do these things for the vestibular system without using their eyes as much. Try to down-regulate the visual system. Um, and try to even them back out so that therefore these complex visual motion walking around a store does not cause them problems. Same thing goes for people that have maybe some visual component, but also their proprioception is a little upregulated. 
Um, and so they have increased tone in muscles, a lot of tightness because of previous dizziness. Now they may be trusting their proprioceptive visual system, but we need to activate their vestibular system to improve that, um, how their brain is receiving inputs from their inner ear so that then they can coordinate that between those three factors, visual, proprioceptive, vestibular, so that they can know where they are in space. And that's what we do here every day. <clears throat> we are constantly looking at these three factors along with many other things and testing obviously other brain regions. But we're looking at these things to try to figure out how do we improve somebody's uh, problems with dizziness, somebody's symptoms, and how can we do it coordinatedly without making them worse or making them plateau? Because if we're driving a lot of visual input, visual exercises, that could be actually detrimental to a patient with PPPD that have visual vertigo or this excess visual motion. So if you have any questions or comments, I would love for you to leave them below. Please leave your suggestions or future topics as well. Thanks again, and I hope you enjoyed this one. Have a great day and stay healthy.